what do people do for health care there? Oh, I Good buy now. my own health care. And did. I actually, yeah, I've had to use it. Um, I hurt my shoulder about two months ago, I think. I, I fractured my shoulder. It fell. Oh. And uh, so I had to go to the emergency room. And it's kind of like in the United States. You know, you go, you show your card. Um, I didn't have to pay anything because of my insurance. I pay about $550 a year for my insurance. I'm 55 years old. Wow. So $550 right. per year. Yes. Okay, so today we are heading down to the Caribbean in the Dominican Republic with my new friend Raquel Lopez. Raquel, how are you? I'm great. Thank you for asking. All right. Well, thanks for doing this. Thanks for being a part of the podcast. I you know, it's an area that I've always wanted to visit. I've never been there. I know a lot of people fly out to, to Punta Cana, where you're at, for, for the mm -hmm. resorts. It's a big resort area in Dominican right. Republic, very gorgeous. Okay. But give us a little backstory about you, where you're originally from, and how you ended up in Dominican Republic. Okay. So I was born in Chandler, Arizona. And I married somebody in the military when I was 20 years old. We moved to uh, the San Francisco Bay Area, Travis Air Force Base. Mm -hmm. And um, I lived there for 26 years. I was a biotech. I worked in the biotech industry for about 23 years. And it got really expensive. I owned a home there. Um, I was really unhappy with my job. Um, I worked graveyard shift 12 hour nights for a long time. Wow. I just decided, you know, hey, I want an easier life. I'm going to sell my place. I'm going to move to um, Mississippi because I could buy a house cash w with yes. my proceeds from selling my house. So I left and I bought a house in Mississippi. I was there for approximately two and a half years and I hated it. It was yeah. um, Trump was president and I know people love him or whatever, but it was I just seen, you know, on TV, the images of places burning up and just mm -hmm. a lot of hate crimes and I just yeah. was sick of it so mm -hmm. you know I had been to the Dominican Republic I knew that they were pretty relaxed on their visa requirements not visa but I guess um overstaying your visa mm -hmm. and so I I took the leap and I just sold everything and I moved okay wow awesome and how did you pick Dominican Republic of all places well, I actually wanted to go to Mexico, but Mexico has gotten to be pretty expensive and there are yes. very strict visa requirements. I believe you have to buy like a 200K house, have like $2,000 a month income. And it just, I wasn't going to be able to swing it. Yeah. Uh, so the Dominican Republic, they're, they have a lower cost. Uh, I think it's about 1400, I want to say, or maybe even less than that. Okay. Um, and so if you buy a property, you you can buy a property without having your residency here. Okay. So yeah, I stayed in a Airbnb for about five months and then I bought my property. Wow. And so is it do you full out own it everything? <laughs> yes, it's mine. You do. Um, okay. Well, we'll get into that in a second. So let's talk about like the visa. You said it's a little bit more relaxed and you said something about fourteen hundred <laughs> minimum amount of income that you need to show. Right. For residents. Yeah. So okay. it might even be less, maybe 1200. I can't remember. I don't have okay. my residence. Yeah. A lot of people here don't have residence. Yeah. Here. Okay. So. And you're, and you're going to apply for that. Eventually, but Eventually. you can leave the country and you just pay at the airport. There's a, um, a tax, uh, overstay tax that you would pay. So me being here two and a half years, I believe it's like $25 each four months that you overstay your visa. So it's really not a lot. Okay. So what kind of a visa are you on right now? I have an American visa. Okay. And how long does that last? How many months? Um, well, I I just renewed it before I came here. Oh, you mean for your 90 days. Oh, but, it is 90 days. But I mean, there's, there's the overstay tax that you pay at the airport when you leave. There's not really any penalty. Okay. So if you, you, you get a 90 day visa and then people pretty much that you can stay for a couple of years and right. then you just pay a penalty. I believe the max you can stay in the country without paying is 10 years. You have to leave and then you will be charged and then you can come back. So okay. 
And the yeah. fee you said is $25 every four months beyond yes. the, okay. So you, months. so you'd pay know. 75 a year. Mm -hmm. It sounds like if you stayed yeah. a year after 90 days. So, so two years would be 150 bucks. So that's right. not bad. Yeah. Okay. Not bad. Okay. So, all right. Great. Okay. So then you have to find a flat. You started out in an Airbnb. Right. But what is the best way? People are always trying to figure out what are the resources in the Dominican Republic where you can find a flat and what is the low end cost on a, on a nice flat that you can get there? It just depends on where you want to live. I mean, the further out you go, of course, it's going to be less expensive. The closer you are to the beach, the more expensive it's going to be. And sure. I've seen places going. I, I mean, I've seen the the increase in rents and Airbnbs exponentially increase yeah. this past two years. So when I came to the Dominican Republic two and a half years ago, I was running a huge one bedroom apartment, one and a half bath for five ninety five a month. That okay. same apartment is about twelve hundred now. Wow. And that's in Punta Cana. Yeah, that's in Punta Cana. Okay. And that are they was, more expensive uh, in the capital, Santo Domingo? It it depends. It's like one of those things. If you're gonna live right right in the center of Santo Domingo, you're gonna pay more money. It will okay. live outer bands you know you're going to pay less money so it's okay. just like that anywhere but i i see everything increasing here okay. also oh yeah yeah i think there's there is a movement there's a lot of no digital nomads that are exploring the world right now and right. um so there are people there's expats everywhere so so what can you get a, a flat now for i mean you know a re, if you're looking you're searching you want to stay there for a year what can you find something for are you saying renting or purchasing renting renting yeah. i would say on the average now for something small it's probably going to be about 750 dollars okay and upwards from there okay and where do you be like a studio where do you find these listings at there so it's it's usually like there's so many realtors here. Um, you'll see the billboards everywhere, but also the best way to do it is to go through the little cities and just look. Most of them will have it posted in the windows. Those are going to be your really good deals. When you go mm -hmm. through a realtor, you're going to pay more. Um, is there a way for people that are, say, in the United States that are considering Dominican Republic that they can begin to research and some online resources? They can, find? but I always feel like you don't get the real picture of like how, how cheap it could be if you wanted it to be. I think sure. that, you know, it's a realtor, they want to make money. So <laughs> they're going to, they're going to charge you, you know, for those resources where if you came here, you got an Airbnb and you just started looking around, I think your deal would be a lot better. Gotcha. Okay. Now that in that seven fifty per month, and that's the low end in Punta mm -hmm. Cana, does that include utilities or do you have to pay that separately? Uh, usually your utilities are separate. Okay. And yeah, they give you like a meter. They read the meter when you first move in and then monthly they'll come and read the meter and then you pay them the utilities because it's usually in, in someone else's name, the owner okay. of the apartment. Yeah. So if you break that down, how much is it typically for you a month for utilities, including Wi-Fi and cell? So water, electric, Wi-Fi, cell. What do you think? You okay. So... Right now is an expensive time of year for me. I like to be comfortable. I feel like I work, so I'm going to run my air conditioner. I can't okay. take the humidity here. Um, my my bill is about $230 a month um, for my okay. utilities. That's my most expensive bill here, um, okay. but I can't live without it. And Does that so, include Wi-Fi and no, your cell phone? No, that's my utilities. Just your ut electric and water only? Right, but I okay. know people that don't use their air conditioning and their bills are like $80. You know, they might just yeah. use it at nighttime. Okay. I, I have to have it on 24 hours a day. I can't yeah. live. <laughs> sure. Sure. Yeah. Right. So what, it, what do you pay for Wi-Fi and cell per month? Your okay. So phone? my Wi-Fi, um, because I work from home, I have the, the fiber optic Wi-Fi. So my Wi-Fi is $70 a month. Okay. Um, and that I just watch TV from that. So my you my cable, um, I subscribe to IPTV. So for the year, that's like 
$125 for two TVs for cable, everything. Like I get okay. Netflix, Hulu, everything. Um, so there's that. Um, and then my phone. So here you don't have to keep a phone. Like if I don't leave the house during the week when I'm working, I don't really need a phone. I don't have to use it, but I still pay for it. Um, it's about $10 every two weeks. So it's $20 a month. Okay. So 20 for, so that's, that's very reasonable. Right. Okay, great. How about groceries? How, are gro groceries costly in Dominican Republic? And how much do you budget per month? Okay, that? so I do about 40 to $50 every week. I don't, I eat Dominican, which means like, um, I eat the chicken and the beef and the pork here, but I pick the Dominican vegetables that are, are local. Yeah, They're so much cheaper. If you eat okay. Dominican, but if you want like mushrooms and things like that, you're gonna pay more money, you know. Sure. So, um, okay. but I do a lot of the beans. I eat with the Dominican seed rice beans. Yeah. You know, so yeah, it keeps well, my costs pretty low. It's fantastic food, plantains, oh, arroz, avocados. I mean, avocados yeah. like the size of my head oh. are like oh, love one dollar. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah, that's the the beautiful thing about the the food is fantastic. Okay. Okay, so we were talking about getting around. How do you get around um, the Dominican Republic and Punta Cana? Can you walk? Okay. Is it a walkable city? If you're downtown, it's so one of the little towns is called Los Corrales. Um, so it's, it's Punta Cana is like, I guess, your what we would call in the United States. Um, so your county. Okay. Yeah. And so Punta Cana covers like a lot of different areas. Um, I live in Verón, which is about 15 minutes from Punta, uh, downtown Los Corrales. Los Corrales is where all the beaches are. Um, we have a lot of beach area here. So you've got different towns, um, cities that it'll be in. But I have a car. So I bought a car when I got here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so but but if you do live in that central area, it is walkable. It's walkable, and What's there's the, the bus too. Yeah, what the bus? You know, if you if you rely on public transportation, what would you pay per month for that? Well, if you go daily, I know it's one dollar there and back. So okay. depending, on, yeah, and if you switch buses, it's like fifty pesos, which is like almost a dollar every time you get off. So if you only have one stop, it's you know one dollar. So if you do that, it'd be like twenty bucks a month, really. If you do five yeah. days a week going to work. Right. So, okay. So public transportation, the bus is, we'll say 20 per month. That sounds good. Yeah. Uh, and, that, and then also you can get the motorcycle guys, the Moro Concho. So they will take you anywhere you want to go for like two bucks. Oh, wow. Okay. So those it. are called Moto Cocho? Moro Concho. Concho. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. Moto Concho. And they'll take you for $2 anywhere? Uh, yeah, if it's really Roughly. far, then they might, yeah, they might charge you more. But I, I mean, like from A to B, it's pretty cheap too. Okay, cool. Cool. All right. Now we're, we're into the food. People love to eat. They love to eat, especially where you live. Right. So you get the little, uh, you get the pescado, the, the arroz, yes. the, mm. the friolis. Oh man, the plantanas. Yes. Oh, so Plantano. good. <laughs> I'm, it's still morning here. I'm getting hungry. So, I mean, <laughs> if you go out to eat, what are restaurants and what do they charge for a typical Dominican uh, meal? I would say it can run you anywhere, depending on where you're at. So if you're downtown in Los Corrales, I'd say the average meal is about $7.50 plus your drink. It may be like $1.50. But you might leave paying like 10 or 12 bucks. Okay. If you go to like a little hole in the wall stand, yes, six bucks, pretty average. Okay. Are there any like neighborhood local restaurants that are, you know, that make the, 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 you know, the great, the soup, you know, the soup with the chicken and the, you, you know, and like you could get these. Yeah. I mean, like how much can you get, get a, a meal like that for? You can go to the supermarket here, and I'll tell you what, they got some really good food. It's better than sometimes the restaurants that I go to. And those can cost you, like, $2 for, like, pollo quisado. Or if you buy a sancocho in, in a grocery store, it's, like, $4. It's, it's really reasonable. And they're, they're serving actual food there. You can order lunch or... 
it's okay. pre it's like they're making it as you're buying it so yeah. they're what's, like packaging it and making it what's the name of those soup super mercados is there a super mercados? ole we have ole, ole. we have mm -hmm. we have um iberia okay okay and we have jumbo that's a big one jumbo j j it's like jumbo but they say jumbo you yeah know? yeah yeah okay and those are all markets that that uh sell food mm -hmm. awesome so what would you budget do you think per month or per would month. a person budget per month to go out to eat if they Same. went you know like typically i would think what people go out to eat maybe two three times a, a week maybe I don't. <laughs> you don't? Only because I work. Yeah. And it's such a hassle sometimes to just get in the car. There's always traffic. Um, yeah. So, okay. And they don't know how to drive here. So it just like, I try to keep my risk low. I go very early in the morning. So, yeah, that's sure. usually when I go out. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody else is driving my car and we go somewhere. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I would say uh, if you eat two to three times a week, if you, if you go to the supermarket and go out to eat once, once in a while, um, in a regular place, I'd say about 25 bucks every week. Every week. So you get by on a hundred a month. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then now we're on to entertainment. What do people do for fun? I'd say usually you go to the beach okay. and, you know, hang out there. You can buy some beers. Um, there's food on the beach. A lot of times you can bring your cooler, you bring your own, if you bring your own umbrella and chairs, which I have in my car. Um, so I just do that myself. But if you're going to go there, it's usually like a rental. You have to rent the little uh, umbrella, the chairs. I think it's like $10 okay. per person. Yeah. Okay. Do they have any like... Um any like uh theater or like dance or you know, like that type yeah. of music stuff that people can entertainment like that yeah you can go there's a cinema here i've never been there for the okay. two and a half years i've lived here i just never go to the movies so that's not really my thing but yeah. um there's live music sometimes on the weekend where you can go and listen to you know like a salsa band and it's free you just buy mm -hmm. drinks there's okay. karaoke. Um, we have a lot of karaoke places. I think every day of the week you can pretty much find a karaoke spot to go to. And those are free. You just pay for your drinks. It's, so it's entertainment is really, really um, cheap. Yeah, cheap, affordable there. If you had to break down a budget per month for you, what would you spend, do you think? Um, so there's one karaoke I like to go to on Monday nights and they have a barbecue at that time. So it's like 350 pesos for all you can eat barbecue. Okay. Um, How much is that USD? It's almost $7. Okay. And so then your drinks are like, I think they charge 150 per beer, $1.50 per beer. So I might have five beers. <laughs> How much is it a beer? 150 per 150? beer. 150. Okay. Yeah okay and that and then you and then after you have five beers you get up and sing <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> so, so what's your what's your go-to um what's your go-to uh song that you sing in karaoke oh it's it's in spanish it's called la gran senora la gran la gran senora mm -hmm. who's 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 that by jenny rivera okay cool all right don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to sing. Yeah, I don't. I, I haven't <laughs> had anything to drink this morning but coffee. <laughs> All right. So what do you, so you've been there for two years, Raquel. What do you, what do people do for health care there? Oh, I buy yeah. my own health care. And did. I actually, yeah, I've had to use it. Um, I hurt my shoulder about two months ago, I think. I, I fractured my shoulder. I fell. Oh. And uh, so I had to go to the emergency room and it's kind of like in the United States, you know, you go, you show your card. Um, I didn't have to pay anything because of my insurance. I pay about $550 a year for my insurance. I'm 55 years old. Wow. So $550 right. per year. Yes. That's a plan through the Dominican Republic, a private plan? Yes. It's, it's called Universal Health Insurance. And okay. If I get injured, say I'm in a bad car accident and they can't treat me here, they will fly me in a helicopter to Florida. 
Wow. Yeah. It's so amazing it's how affordable insurance can be outside the United States. I saw my bill. This is really funny because I thought I was going to have to pay a copay when I went to the emergency room for my arm. And um, they gave me a shot for pain. I, I don't do really good on like opioid, opioid drugs. So they just prescribed me um, something mild. So anyway, I, I saw the bill and it was $65 American and I was going to pay it. And they said, no, no, you don't owe anything. It's paid. Your, your insurance paid for it. Wow. But in the emergency room, that's unheard of it, anywhere. Well, so it really kind of freaked me out when I left. I was like, wow. That that is that's that's impressive. That's very cool. All right. And then the last thing I have is that you purchase property. So you can purchase property in the Dominican Republic. How complicated of a process is that? And what are flats or condos going for? So I purchased this uh two years ago, August, and I paid sixty four thousand dollars for my townhouse. I have a two bedroom, one and a half bath um townhouse here um i paid cash and so i'm still waiting on my title though wow yeah that's interesting <laughs> yeah it takes a long time to get your title it's sometimes i just don't think like common sense is common here so yeah. sometimes things don't make sense but I, I mean, think that it's like that everywhere. There's bureaucracy and things are slow no matter. That's the one thing like I've interviewed people and right. you know, it's probably 60 different countries already and it seems yeah. to be the same thing. You know, when you move and you are an expat, there is a process and paperwork and it can right. be lengthy and delayed and um so that's just I think something that every person who decides to live overseas mm -hmm. has to expect. Yeah, you get used to it. And that's why I said, you know, it it used to bother me, but I've heard so many similarities. And and I know I have a friend that lives in this complex and he got finally got his title. So I was like, well, it's coming, you know. So you yeah. just have to wait. And he nice. waited a long time too. So Okay. You just get used to waiting, but it's really you want to hear something funny. I meet I have American friends that will come to visit and say they'll stay in an Airbnb or whatever, and they're just so high stressed. And I'm it cracks me up because I feel like I was the same way when I first got here. Yeah. And that's yeah, and that's the movement. I think it's a worldwide movement. I think there's just a ton of people that are uh, you know, after COVID, it just a lot of light bulbs went off and people started working from their computers and right. started to look for different ways to approach life and live. Right. And it's very interesting, you know, and I think it's a, I think it's awesome that you took that leap because a lot of people, they think about it, but they never do. And, and that and was it, me. Yeah. I, I was really afraid because I had so much stuff. Like you don't realize how much stuff you accumulate. And I did it again after leaving California and going to Mississippi, I had more stuff again. And it was like thinking about getting rid of it. And finally, I just said, you know what? I don't want all this stuff, but you know yeah. what happened? I came here and now I have all this stuff again. So yes. <laughs> it happens. That's what we do as humans. I mean, you get a space and then you accumulate, you do accumulate right. stuff, right. you know? So with that, with the 64,000, is that what, these apartments and townhomes are still going for today can you find that uh you can if it, if you're on a new project like they're offering say they're offering it at sixty five thousand to start you know I you got to get in right now you got to come and bring the money and, or for the down payment you don't have to pay the whole thing off but at least for the new build because they're going to go up yeah you know so do, yeah do they include any amenities at all They'll, very basic, yeah. but sometimes you'll find some builders that include a lot of things, um, but the price will go up too. Yeah. So I had to put in my air conditioners. I had to buy my refrigerator. I had to, you know, buy my washer, my washer. I only have a washer. Um, and what else did I have? My, my lights. Cause they come up really, really basic. Lighting. Yeah. So, wow. so I probably put a, a, at least 10 grand into it when I came. Okay. Still, an, an ama that's an amazing deal. You're living in, in a, a tropical paradise, um, close to some of the most beautiful beaches in the world. Exactly. Yeah. It's crystal clear, beautiful. If you're a diver, snorkeler, I mean, it is an ideal place to live for that amount of money. That's incredible. Um, it really is incredible. 
Um, well, that's pretty much all I have, Raquel. Is there anything else that we we didn't discuss that that you can think of that might be beneficial for the viewers to know about living there? Any discoveries? Don't date for for a long time because, of course, you have a lot of people that will see expats as predatorial material. So you have to be really careful about okay. who you deal with. Yeah. So don't date. I wouldn't. I wouldn't suggest it. Okay. So you're saying that like because you think that that men are going to pursue you because of your money, you come from the US and it's not really a genuine that's yes, exactly. Exactly. And those are the experiences that I've had and all my friends have had. You you have to, it's kind of like a, a rite of passage here. You have to go through that. And some people will stay in those situations and it's like a never ending emptying of your pockets. Mm, okay. Yeah. So you become a sugar mommy. Saying, yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> And I, I'm not really made for sugar, sugar momminess. So I yeah. was like, I got to cut this loose. I'm I sorry. You. You know? Okay. So, and, the, yeah. and, and what, what has been the, the, the best thing that you've um, experienced living there so far? I mean, what, what kind of wowed you or surprised you after moving there? Would you say? I love the winters here. Um, I think, cause after you, you know, the humidity of the summer, spring, summer, once you get to winter, it's just the most beautiful place to, to be. And I think mm. like I've had some really, really good neighbors. Yeah. And so like just hanging out with them and like where they, they look out for you or they, you know, they'll tell you, Hey, I think I saw your dog eat something. You might want to check on them, you know? And so you don't really get that in the States or I think what sometimes surprises me even still to this day is that people will come and knock on your door and ask you if you need maid service or anything like that. Mm. And you just, don't see that in the United States, you know, people will think you're crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, or if I go to the store, I, I have these little, we have these little, um, like, like a circle K would be where we live, except for they have like healthy foods in them. Yeah. Uh, here you go there and you, and you'll say, Oh, I forgot my credit card at home. And they'll say, Oh, just come back and pay me later. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't see that in the United States. No, no, you know, so or like a lot of times the guys might not have change. Oh, so you can call them up and they'll come and bring you food to your house. And then you just give them a little tip, you know, and sometimes they won't have change and they'll go, I'll come back in a, in a little while and bring you some change. And they come back, yeah. you know, so it's, wow. it's not what people think. I think like people think of danger, but I can leave my clothes outside overnight and nobody will touch them. I can leave uh, my neighbors, leave their bikes sitting in their front yard and nobody will touch them. Yeah. So you have to really appreciate that reminds me of living in the United States when I was a kid, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, sure. Exactly. Right. Wow. All right. Well, cool. Well, Raquel Lopez, thank you so much for, for being a part of the podcast and sharing all of this wealth of information. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And you have a great, <laughs> yeah, you have a great rest of the day and I'll, and I'll touch base uh, soon. 